They are just incredible young men. They are the lifeblood of this team, in my opinion. They embody everything that we're trying to do in the community and in competition. They're that great combination of like great person and great player. Born only minutes apart, Andrew and Trey Jenkins have been teammates since birth, but their greatest achievements together have come on the San Jose State football team as they captured an undefeated season and a Mountain West title together in 2020. I can't really ever put into words what it'll be like to explain playing with your twin brother. And I think it's just a special type of deal because it's like, you know, my whole life I have another half and I don't ever think there's no Drew without Trey, there's no Trey without Drew. And so just to be able to have that, you know, bond show up on game day. And I think it's an amazing thing. It's, it's one of a kind. I can't even, it's hard to even explain, you know, like we've been doing it for so long, it feels normal. I just know it's always competitive. And I, mean, I just know we used to get in fights at the park playing basketball one-on-one. -on -one. So that type of thing, that type of relationship is really what, how we can call ourselves brothers. After six years of playing alongside each other, Drew and Trey entered their final season on the SJSU football team. The Spartans rebounded from a 1-5 start to win six straight games and a share of the Mountain West regular season championship. Led by Andrew and Trey, the Spartans secured a spot in their second straight bowl game, the Hawaii Bowl versus Coastal Carolina. Their leadership, their enthusiasm each and every day, the way they get along with all the other players, they're kind of the glue that keeps everyone together, offense and defense. They have just this incredible amount of respect from our team. They combine like really high level academic success, high level football success, just incredible work ethic. They're everything that's right about college football. Although the twins play the same position on the field, the brothers have each walked very different paths in life. Although they're both exceptional young men, they're both very different. And what you see from Trey as a leader is different than what you see of Andrew as a leader. Like Trey, as a starting safety, he's intense. His athletic uh, ability aligns with that leadership. Trey has always been considered a top athlete and was highly recruited when entering SJSU coming out of high school. He earned the starting safety spot on the Spartan squad in his sophomore year and hasn't looked back receiving an All-Mountain West Honorable Mention selection three times. Trey hopes to find himself playing on Sundays next season. I mean, Trey will always tell you um, I'm his biggest fan. I think he's the best football player I'll ever play with. I think he's the best football player to ever play the game. You know, the way that he approaches the game, you know, it's unmatched. You know, he's a playmaker. Um, again, real vocal leader, great in the locker room. I mean, he's, he's special and he's going to continue to play after we're done here. Drew, on the other hand, walked on to the football team and mostly plays on special teams. He came in as a walk-on and I was a recruited guy and I knew that I was gonna go play football and I knew that was Drew's biggest dream was go play football. You know, he has this passion about him that is unmatched. But where Drew really excels is in the classroom. I remember when we were in COVID, we were in Las Vegas for like three or four weeks and it was during finals and Drew was like, holding a study hall in one of the ballrooms. I think Andrew Jenkins will be the governor of California before we know it. Well, he's never gotten anything less than an A since he stepped on campus in any class he's ever taken. Drew was named an SJSU President Scholar four times, as well as the Mountain West Scholar Athlete in 2020, 2021, and 2023. He was also the recipient of the SJSU Dr. Harry Edwards Award in 2022. To be recognized by Dr. Edwards was just a tremendous honor for a young man like Drew who put so much thought into everything that he does. To receive that award was incredible. Whatever thing he wants to do in life, and he can do a lot of different things. He could be, you know, the leader of a CEO of a company to a football coach if he wanted to, to anything in between, at the mayor of San Jose if he wanted. He could do it all. And that just goes to show like the drive that he has, whatever he sets his mind to, he gets it done. Regardless of where each brother's path takes them, they both hope to leave their mark on the San Jose community through their own leadership and the Beyond Sparta program. They took the uh, opportunity that what at that point was beyond football and they followed through with their word, which was, you know, I wanna be involved, I wanna do something. And a lot of times we have athletes that might say that, but 
they don't follow through. So particularly, they started really most of their efforts in becoming youth mentors um, at a local elementary school. Football is a really important thing, but when you boil down to it and it stems down to it, what's really important is handling those things off the field with the family, your relationships, and showing that you do more than just play on the football field. Like It, it affects other people. It makes other people want to do more positive things. Yeah, I mean, again, speak on that. Like he said, our mom always told us we're more than a football player. And, you know, our mom, we're a very Christian family. Our mom always taught us, you know, live out your kind of like your God divine image. And, you know, I think our image is not just, you know, football players. Is that, you know, it's people who are being good stewards of the world, helping people, pouring into people. I mean, that's just what San Jose is about. <laughs> Kicking off the 2023 fall golf season, the Spartan men found themselves 5,000 miles from home in Hokkaido, Japan, teeing it up in the Pan Pacific Golf Super League Collegiate Championship at the Sapporo Regent Golf Club. The tournament brings together both men's and women's teams from the US, Japan, Korea, China, and Thailand, allowing players to experience Japanese golf culture firsthand. This tournament started 30 plus years ago with Coach Vroom and his relationship with Nippon Golf in Japan. Unfortunately, Fukushima happened about 12 years ago and um, in essence that shut everything down on the tournament and this was a reboot. Upon arrival in Japan, the Spartans were treated to a tour of Tokyo, experiencing the culture of one of the world's most vibrant cities. Yeah, I mean, it was such a lovely opportunity for us, being able to just travel overseas. So we definitely went sightseeing in Tokyo. We, we saw a lot of their culture, but the thing that stuck out to me was definitely their food. I love their food. I keep coming back to that place for the food. I've had Japanese food plenty of times as I'm also quarter Japanese, but um, them, I can't say I've ever thought I would get sick of rice, but I legitimately got pretty sick of rice by the end of the trip. We were blessed with a little bit of time uh, in Tokyo. We were able to, to enjoy some of the culture there in Tokyo, to actually be in a different culture. It was just in a, you know, outstanding for the guys to see that. Going to a different kind of place is absolutely amazing for us. For senior Carl Corpus, it was the bathroom he was most surprised by. Honestly, I, I mentioned an interview there as well. Um, the toilet is ridiculous. Um, the toilet, it's like a self-cleaning toilet. You can play music on the toilet. You can warm it up. But the restrooms are super clean, so that's what really stuck out to me outside. The cultural differences didn't end once the Spartans teed off. It was very unique, mainly because no one there really spoke a whole lot of English. So you couldn't really hold any conversations with them. We were also in golf carts. So it was, you'd hit your golf shot and then you'd just kind of walk to the golf cart. It was a co-ed tournament. So we'd tee off one group of guys uh, and then there would be a group of women and then there'd be another group of guys. The biggest eye-opener was at the turn. Actually, at the turn, we'd have a complete stop of play, and you'd eat lunch. In Japan, players stop for lunch mid-round, playing the front nine, then taking an hour break for lunch before playing the back nine. While a catered meal is always appreciated, SJSU senior Carl Corpus found out the downside of the long break. I started really well. I was nine under through nine holes, but we stopped for like an hour after nine holes, which was super different for me. I've never had that in my life, but it kind of backed me up, kind of made me thinking like, oh, I'm leading for like four strokes or five strokes. Kind of wasn't good for me. Carl got off to a really hot start, and then he had to sit down for an hour <laughs> and then play the back nine where it took over three hours to play the back nine. It's different. You got to learn how to handle it. Corpus led San Jose State to a third-place tournament finish, 
finishing ninth overall individually. The strong showing was a great start to the season for the Spartans, but more importantly, the shared adventure between teammates helped build camaraderie and open their eyes to another culture. All in all, the trip was a lifetime experience. There isn't anybody that went on this trip that isn't gonna be affected by this for their entire lifetime, myself included. It was, it was such an exceptional experience for all. Just being together as a team was just unbelievable and probably one of my most memorable Spartan moments. SJSU women's soccer is getting a new neighbor in 2024. So before we start training, uh, I have an exciting announcement for you guys that uh, is going to be announced today. Um, the new women's professional soccer team, Bay FC, um, it has their home field practice facility locker rooms here on our San Jose State campus, on our game fields, um, in, in, in the new facility. So it's gonna be a wonderful experience for you guys to be. The brand new National Women's Soccer League team, Bay FC, will be moving in as they unveiled plans to locate their training facility at San Jose State as they prepare for their inaugural season. In general, for the entire community, it's such a big win. Um, we haven't had a women's professional soccer team here for many years, and the last team that was here won. You know, that really ties in with historically what we're doing here at San Jose State. Bay FC is the newest women's professional soccer franchise and will be the 14th team to join the National Women's Soccer League. The team was founded by former U.S. women's national team players Brandi Chastain, Leslie Osborne, Ali Wagner, and Danielle Slayton. I mean, it only makes sense that we're bringing pro women's soccer back to the Bay Area because this place is such a hotbed for women's soccer and it has been for decades. And so I think us bringing this back to the Bay is something that's an important piece, not only in the development of the women's game, but in our national team and also something we can give back to this area. Bay FC looked at a few different places to house their training center but ultimately decided on SJSU because of the university's facilities and the shared locality of the school and the new team. So we're really excited about being able to sort of repurpose some of the, the facilities at San Jose State to make a locker room, a lounge, an office space for our Bay FC athletes. I think it'll be a mutually beneficial situation where you're going to have fans from Bay FC intermingling with fans of San Jose State women's soccer and other programs. So we think there's going to be just great energy uh, around both programs and we can continue to elevate the stature of the sport of soccer in the Bay Area. Having a professional team so close will have a large impact on the SJSU women's team as they will have a chance to observe and learn from Bay FC. It's not always about the training session. It's more about uh, the possibility of, of mentorships that we can learn. You know, they're gonna have the example right in front of them to try and create a relationship with some of these professionals that knows what it takes to get where they're at. The Spartans also believe having an NWSL team on campus will help bring in top recruits and more notoriety to SJSU. We have wonderful training facilities and opportunities for our female student athletes in women's soccer at SJSU. And now having just the presence of a professional soccer team right in our backyard, that's gonna get a first-hand look at our wonderful talent on Tina's team. Not only will the players wanna come here because Tina and like the coaching staff here at San Jose State, but also the professional team coaches will also get another look at them up and close because we're all practicing on the same field now. So it's a huge opportunity for everyone here. The San Jose State women's soccer team is excited and honored to have the chance to train alongside a professional team, as many of the players hope to continue their careers by entering the NWSL. It's also a dream come true too, because I want to play professional, so it's almost like I'm looking at my dreams right there as I'm practicing. Not many university programs receive such an opportunity to practice next to the pros, 
especially for female athletes. I mean, we're so lucky and we're so blessed, especially as female athletes, you know, we don't get to see a lot of tangible examples for ourselves. And so to have them train kind of in our facilities and using these beautiful new facilities that we have is just special to us, you know. So we're really lucky and we're really excited about it. The business team is up and running, the, the soccer ops team is up and running, and what is next to stay tuned is really our players. We'll be making announcements soon about uh, our first free agent signings coming up. Um, and then on the flip side, on the business side, it's about selling tickets, about building our fan base, and really creating an atmosphere and a game day experience that everybody's going to love. San Jose State water polo is back. While the program officially returned to the pool in 2015 after a 34-year hiatus, the 2023 Spartans success signaled to the entire country their return to prominence. We had good teams in previous years, and I felt like uh, we, we kind of put too much pressure on ourselves, and uh, we always fell a little bit of a short. We had really close games against really good teams. And uh, I felt like this year we didn't put the pressure on ourselves, we just wanted to have fun. I think we started the season with more belief in ourselves than we have in years past. This was the year where we had a group of guys who actually got together and played as a team. Uh, we knew if we work hard that the result will come, uh, and I think that was the difference. The West Coast Conference added water polo as an official sport for 2023 adding SJSU, as well as Pepperdine, Loyola Marymount, and others for the inaugural season. The Spartans didn't waste time making their mark in the new conference. We came out first game of the season and beat Davis, who I think was ranked number four. First time we beat Santa Barbara, and we haven't beat them in eight years uh, since we have the program. We beat them by multiple goals. Um, UOP, we never beat them, we beat them at their own turf. Holding on to the good things, looking at not where necessarily we were at certain moments, but where we could be. Um, and there was always a lot of positivity and optimism in that. To be honest, we, we, we kind of had that mentality that whoever comes in our way, we're going to try our best and, uh, and, and we have a chance. After a successful regular season, the Spartans were ready to make a run at the WCC Championship Tournament. San Jose State powered past University of the Pacific in the opening round with a 14-9 victory. The semifinals matchup was against Loyola Marymount, who had already beaten the Spartans twice during the regular season, including a 13-12 shootout just two weeks earlier. After our first game in, in September when we played on I told the guys that, hey, we're going to play three times at least. There's no way that a team going to beat us three times in one season. The Spartans pulled out a hard-fought 7-5 victory over Loyola Marymount in the semifinals and went on to beat California Baptist 9-6 in the finals to clinch the inaugural WCC championship. It was amazing. It's been something that we've been working towards, you know, just winning conference in general since I came here and how we did it as well. We, we did it as a team. We won WCC through defense um, and heart. I don't think there was a team down there who wanted to win as much as we did. And I think everyone's hearts were at just the right place where it actually counted. Winning the West Coast Conference Championship gave the Spartans entry into the NCAA Championship Water Polo Tournament for the first time since 1973. San Jose State was such a dominant uh, water polo program in the 60s and 70s. It produced so many Olympians, uh, national team coaches. Our program has such a rich history. It's cool to be slowly getting back where, where it used to be. We reached this goal, now we gotta move on to the next one. And then maybe, you know, make it a more, of a, more often of a, a appearance to the NC2As. The 2023 Spartans would face their biggest test of the season in the quarterfinals of the NCAA National Championships, facing off against the number one ranked USC Trojans. I was really proud of the team because we went out and played USC at their pool. And the first four or five minutes, you know, we just, just brought the energy. 
Unfortunately, the dream season came to an end against USC, but the Spartans proved they are a program on the rise. There's been a lot of teaching moments um, for all of us as a team and individually about over, overcoming adversity and um, sticking with it, you know, when the going gets tough. I hope we started a culture. I hope we established something and again, just put our names down and put San Jose State on that water polo map again.